Hi. First of all, a set of questions. Why do you think you're reading this? Do you think it's just a coincidence? Really? Have you ever thought it was possible to see God for yourself? Does it matter if you call this God or the human spirit or Woxiwoo if the reality is the same? Would you like to try? Would you like to go beyond Nirvana and anything that words can describe? Would you like to see what Buddha has been up to for the last 2,500 years? And what the Logos is doing now for mankind? Would you like to experience Vishvakarman or meet Ahura Mazda? Where is the Mahdi now and how do you find him? And where is Mushaya and how do you connect? Maybe you would prefer to discover the fundamental behind every business idea, every service and every product. Or discover the process by which every money-making idea has come into being and money itself too. Would you like to know the root of human knowledge? Every science, every art, all human creation and non-human creation too. Would you like to know where every university subject came from and every handicraft such as cooking, origami, flower arranging and all human activity finds its root? How about the origins of sport, of drama, of poetry, of writing, of communication, of words or language or significance itself? And what about ethics? Or maybe you would like to learn not to be bossed around inside and learn to become true master or mistress of yourself. And how do you bless others too whilst leaving them free to be themselves? Would you like to learn all this by a method that involves your own observation of your own experience and you coming to your own conclusions for yourself. Can any one course give all of this? Why ever not? Does that really make sense? All this has been devised for people who want to try and have first-hand experience of spirit reality by reliable and safe means. After all, if you can do it safely, why not? It was originally individual guidance for some friends whose physical distance made personal contact difficult. It is now clear that it can have other uses and so I am now making it more generally available. The more people read and use it, the better, as will become clear later. You know why you want to try and see for yourself and that is none of my business. If you are not seeking actual personal experience and would be satisfied with a description of what can be found through spiritual research, please refer to other books. These can include a whole range of lectures by Rudolf Steiner and others that you can find in the bibliography at the end. It must be clear from the outset that if you do nothing with this, you will get nothing out of it. If you apply what is set out here and work at it, it can be, uh, become priceless for you, leading to realizations that go beyond what you can conceive of now and what you will be able to conceive of later on. The aim here is to provide you with tools which you can use for judging various personal matters for yourself using your own criteria. It is not up to me to suggest what they might be, but I'm simply giving you instruments for navigating through life. Who can you rely on to give you accurate readings of where you are, if not yourself? But how can you be sure of your own accuracy 
particularly when there are so many divergent views and so many doctrines. Here you can find the means for finding things out for yourself. In my experience, nothing is as deeply satisfying as the kind of personal res research I propose. That does not mean this is all a game. Life itself is deadly serious, but everyone needs enjoyment and deep experience is deeply enjoyable. This is a toolbox, not lessons in what to think, nor is it information or dogma of any kind. As human beings we need to think our way through life. If along the way we found a new civilization based upon more than just vast quantities of information, we can do it using the means given here. Don't think you will go astray in any kind of daydreaming here. The whole point is not to add to any illusions we might already have, but to eliminate them instead. For this reason, methods for checking results both alone and with others are also set out in detail. The starting point for this journey you will set out on is only yourself and can only be the time when you read this or discover it, complete with all your faults, your virtues, your limits and your own worldview. The approach here is to learn by experience without giving out any dogma whatsoever. For this reason the whole text is set out as a series of riddles or questions, just like life is in itself. However, in this latest version, I have allowed myself to add statements of the very, very obvious, often in the form of additional questions to ask yourself. And this is only because some previous readers have missed out on some milestone experiences in the past. But it is very important that you make your own discoveries because this is a path of experience once again. This is why guidance is given only by asking questions. Each of us has to discover our own objective answers for ourselves. They are not supplied in any way, but they exist. Manipulation, as you are no doubt aware, can be carried out by successfully choosing and carefully how questions are put. But here the questions are in their very nature worded so as to be neutral. Don't believe me. You check this out for yourself as you read the texts and as you watch the videos. This path has already been followed for many years by a significant number of people working in cooperation but nevertheless in total freedom. There is no master nor any disciples. Each of us recognise that we are all in the process of improving ourselves, walking along the same path and we work together in the spirit of mutual assistance. For each question there is a correct answer, or more than one, as stated above. This has been tested through the cooperation of various people throughout the way. Now the answers are objective and then if an answer is good, it is capable of being found experimentally through repeating the exercise, just as it would be in any scientific experiment, and anybody at all can discover it to be the same. Over more than 45 years, the author has personally carried out over 16,500 individual checks on the results in question. This number has been greatly exceeded by several other experiments carried out by a number of independent investigators in various different countries. And this is why this path has been called spiritual science. Just as in all science, there is a certain know-how which is needed to set up the technical conditions for each experiment. And that is the reason why the exercises and the riddles and questions are stated in a precise order. It is therefore pointless to try and carry them out in a different sequence or before you've prepared adequate tools for observation, which are necessary in order to pass from one exercise to another. Nevertheless, it is not always vital to have answered one question before passing to the next in those cases where answering a question is an 
absolute precondition for moving on. This is clearly stated. I must stress that no other experiential path or experimental path either goes in this same direction and not even in theory. Most other paths try and avoid the present realities of mankind and try to reconstruct states which belong to the past and which are presumed to be more spiritual. Spiritual science instead tries to take mankind as it is today with its newest faculties and develop them for the future benefit of all creation. Please do not believe a single word that has been said here. Check it out for yourself by your own experience. Try the first exercise and compare the state you're in after it with the state in which you found yourself before after having tried any or after having tried any other exercise from any other path that is today so called spiritual. If you would like to continue this comparison, you can see for yourself that what moves spiritual science and what inhabits other paths, even their latest modernized forms, is very different. The whole point is to learn to really think and see for yourself. That is why no dogmatic statements are made at all. A good way of thinking of this is like a toolbox. What you do with those tools is up to you. You can ignore them, they, or they can be used to open gateways to new experience. <sighs> Interspersed with these exercises are a few notes about points that have arisen for the author as a result of carrying out these exercises. Once again, care has been taken to ensure neutral wording of the texts, even though these conclusions may be startling at first. The time is always right to change the way we think, if we can see things more clearly and precisely by doing so. Just one word of caution though, subsubstances distort results when ingested, and if any are taken, this should be taken into account when weighing up the results you obtain. In the same way, preconceptions, laziness and wishful thinking can also distort results and must be taken into account. The same applies to feelings, instincts, etc. Honesty with yourself above all is the real key. I am not your master. Nobody is, for you truly are destined to be your own master. Others can and will help, but only, uh, I would stress, as brothers and sisters, just as I am personally available to. Ways of dealing with some problems are also dealt with here. For example, the method of checking by repetition eliminates some distortions in research, but other effects may be slower to remove. In practice, the simplest way of proceeding is trying to eliminate such factors at the outset when in undertaking research. Other useful outlines, guidelines are set out later. It's my firm belief that no matter how far other people say they have progressed, it is only the inner content that each of us has personally experienced that affects our life. This means that for accessing direct personal inner experience, which will form part of the memories of lifetime, that is what is vital and that is what is set out here. Now the course structure is as follows. First of all you will find exercises that lead to certain experiences. Each exercise is described in working detail as are the steps for, to be carried out in order to complete it. After the description, follow questions to be answered by carrying out the exercise. Comments follow about some aspects of the exercise itself. Then, if appropriate, there are certain variations that may be useful and are connected with the following exercise. After each exercise, there are some notes from me regarding some of the implications arising from the carrying out of the exercise itself, the performance of the exercise. And the first part ends with an epilogue which puts all of the 
exercises in a present day context and give some idea of comparative timings with variations on the exercises. The second part begins with the study of human relationships an example of possible practical applications. The proposed investigations assume the complete mastery of the techniques set out here. Then follows a series of questions on a whole range of topics which go some way to illustrating the vast potential sphere of application of the techniques. Full exploration of the second part will take a very long time indeed if enough people decide to go down this route. The consequences of failing to do so will be evident to the reader by this point. At the end will be found a small collection of subjects for meditation and also a bibliography. Thank you for your time. If you have any information and comments, you can send them to the email above. Thank you.